Hello everybody, welcome to the Blitz Pit Final uh, Replay Analysis It's because live I had a rubbish mic, my, my, my mic settings were bad for a while so I, I did cast these live with BZL and uh, this live with BZL and the other Blitz Pits games but the microphone's rubbish so the VODs aren't very good um, so this was the final, Christopher versus Random Boy. Well, or Random Boy versus Christopher. Christopher won the toss and chose to receive. Uh, no, actually, he didn't win the toss and chose to receive. Christopher had won all of his games, so he had the he just got to choose to receive. Random Boy did lose against Christopher early in the tournament. So this is a rematch. Um, <laughs> no, no, he was very good. He was very good. It's just that my microphone was terrible. Um, so Random Boy lost and then was went through the won the losers bracket to get his rematch versus Christopher. He lost in overtime um, the first time they played. So you can see I really liked uh, Christopher's team actually, apart from not having reserves. That's the only bad thing about it. But obviously he couldn't afford reserves. But you know he's got a big guy with block guard, all four no glories with block guard, and then two claw mighties and a show hands. Like it's really, it's really like kind of min maxi, isn't it? Kind of uh, just good, isn't it? It's just good. I just like it. I just like it. Um, Random Boy is a bit more strange, like this tackle, break tackle guy, and only one guard on a Saurus, and then a guard Crocs, and a block, 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 and a block mighty. I don't know, it's weird. It's obviously good because it's lizard men, and there was no elves really to exploit them. So, both were good for the format, really, weren't they? Uh, I think both would have had some problems against elves. Of course, no tackle at all on uh, on Christopher's team. And only one tackle on Random Boy's team. But they've managed to get through to the final due to the lack of uh, due to the lack of them, I think. Due to the lack of elves. Was this was this bad by Random Boy exposing him? He didn't have to expose the guard, did he? I could have had uh, the block a block mighty exposed. It doesn't follow. So now he's got an interesting decision here, right? Because if he blocks, I should have paused this. If he blocks with the uh, blocks with the beast, if it works, it's great because he gets a mighty blow knockdown, right? But if he boneheads, then he hasn't even got the assist for. Uh, for the hit from the Nurgle Warrior, so it may have been better to have blocked with a Nurgle Warrior there. Uh, you know, well, it would have been safer to block with a Nurgle Warrior, wouldn't it? But he went for the he went for the slightly greedier Mighty Blow hit. Gets the knockdown and kills him, thanks to the Mighty Blow. So the Mighty Blow, well, I mean, you, you do want the Mighty Blow hits. That's, that's the thing, don't you? You want the Mighty Blow hits, and he got it and got the cards. So um, instant Apo from... Uh, from Random Boy, despite it being a death, and he got lucky with a 50 50. But he's gotten for the second half at least, but um, yeah, it's a huge removal turn one. Absolutely massive. Hello, Suramol. Long time no see. So he's hitting back with Mighty Blow, which doesn't seem very exciting, does it? When, uh, when Cruiser has got these Claw Mighties that can blitz his Saurus. Hitting back with a pathetic mighty blow every turn. Not super exciting. Yeah, it was quite a good it was quite a good turn one, wasn't it? Just killing the crocs instantly. Yes, claw is. Claw is the bane of lizards really, isn't it? Because they lose their Saurus, and once they lose their Saurus, they're not uh, they're not very happy. So Crucifer is kind of relying on the uh, on the Beast of Nurgle again here, isn't he, to not go stupid? It was a bit risky, that, I think. A bit risky. Yeah, that's a thing, I think, in uh, Blood Bowl 2016. They pretty much are too good, aren't they? He moved that Claw Mighty next to the ball. He probably should have done that before he did the block, didn't he? Now, bear in mind, this was one-minute turns, so you're not going to see totally optimal play, are you? 
wouldn't expect to see totally optimal play. Of course, people are going to get you know, lack of time. They're going to make some more mistakes than normal. But of course, Crucifer is an absolute veteran of CCL. Uh, qualified more than anyone probably, and won more than anybody. Random boys, good sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes random boys are good coach. Hello J5. Le Double Skulls. And another reason to another reason to uh to receive of course is that you can use you can be more liberal with your rerolls on offense than defense, with uh, the possibility of overtime. So I definitely like receiving. Like not just for the two claw mighty hits off the LOS. So yeah, it's a, it's a bit sad to just make stuns, isn't it? But at least you, at least you know, at least you're stunning the Saurus and getting the getting the space and that to move forward. Like the, the big weakness, of course, of Crucifer's team is the movement five ball carrier. is a bit, a bit pathetic, isn't it? Movement five. Um, so he's got to take this space when it's given to him. Absolutely bizarre move from Random Boy here with just getting his skink surfed. Um, it's an obvious three dice blitz into a three dice block <laughs> into a two dice surf. Um, I thought that was very, very strange. Very strange play by a random boy there. He didn't follow up with a blitz or a double base or anything. Just randomly sacrificed a skink. Very bizarre. I mean, you could even make it three dice into three dice into three dice, couldn't you? Three dice in a seat block always good. And he takes the power here. Crucifer, I would have taken the push and surfed him 100%. 100% I would have gone for the surf. Ball. As it happens, he gets the KO, so he's, he's happy anyway. He's not really moving forward, is he? One square. No, oh, a couple of squares. I, know, I would have taken the not moving forward to surface game, to be honest. Personally. I think he's not going to activate the beast here. Good, good move, not activating the beast. I don't want to take the risk of him being exposed a little bit there. Locking him down there. Cheeky one in nine from the skink. So now he can really get forward. And in fact, he, he's got so much guard, hasn't he? This is the problem with uh, Random Boy's team. He hasn't. He's hardly got any guard, has he? One, one guard on the Saurus and one guard on the Croc. So he's only got two total. Christopher's got five guard total, and he's basically as strong as him once he's taken out Crocs. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty brutal. And what I didn't like about this was he did the three dice from that direction. And obviously he was going to get a three dice and with block and everything later, but I think I would have... Uh, Blitzed him from one square to the left, so I could have pushed him here to get a three dice with him. I'd just rather rather done that because they can all all the warriors can hit. You know, he's got all the hits lined up for the Saurus, right? That he hits him, he hits him. These three all hit one each. So by pushing him down that way, you could have got an extra three dice with him, which I think would have been better. <laughs> no, Johnny Five, it doesn't. There's no spoilers during the regular season, Johnny Five. It's only the playoffs that have the 48 hour spoilers thing. That's nearly every single player on the Lizard Men team on the floor. 
absolutely dominating. But not actually removals, right? There's only the the Apo's guns. There's only uh, you know there's a chance of eleven men for Random Boy here still for the second half. There really was the argument for not standing up at all that turn, wasn't there? I think, I think it was probably a wise move to not stand up at all there, just because there was no perms, right? He's, at, he's sure his apple's gone, but he hasn't actually taken any damage. So I think there was a strong, a strong shout for not just lying down that turn. But instead, he's giving up all of these block hits and mighty blow and claw hits. I don't think that was the I don't think that was the right play from Random Boy there. But again, I'm not being super critical or harsh or anything. There were one minute turns, so you know I'm not. And everyone's good players and everything. <laughs> nice little chain there to make it a three make it a two dice on the source and then a three dice on the skink. Very nice getting three dice skinks with block. So that guy's dead because because he stood up. I mean, Christopher's only got 11 men, so he wasn't going to be able to foul. So yeah, I think I would have definitely just left everybody on the ground. He's quite lucky that this was a stun as well, not just failing. The fact that it's a stun means that he doesn't have to protect the ball from that side at all. And can just focus on getting the claw mighty hit on. Another kill. Brutal. Yeah, I, I just didn't think he was gonna. I just didn't think he was gonna stop the score. Now he looks like he's definitely gonna stop the score, right? He's definitely not gonna stop the score now. So now he's running away with him. <laughs> now he's effectively lying down for the last couple of turns, but. Yeah, I think I think he definitely should have laid down. But you know, it's easy to say that, especially with him getting killed and him KO'd, right? You know <laughs> on another day maybe um maybe Crucifer quad skulls and then random boy gets two dice in the ball and stops the score or whatever, right? But I think it probably wasn't worth it. Hello, Dr. Mon Vasco. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> exactly. It's always good to watch a game. Not always fun to play it. <laughs> and yeah, he just skipped his turn seven, random boy. So perfect stall from Christopher. Both KOs stay out. Brutal. Amps now, obviously, that's pretty unlucky, but he has got another chance, hasn't he, random boy? He's got another chance for those two to come back. One turn's pretty difficult with the uh, disturbing presences. And haven't used the whole method with only eight players. It's, uh, so he's probably better off hoping for a riot. I'm just trying to punch things. I think maybe he should have had one of these skinks here so that he could have taken a hand off. Um, you know, on a 3 plus. I think that's maybe a bit of a mistake by him having them both here. Either out wider or back, you know, not in the stone. But you don't really don't want them in the stone. 
because he really was only playing for the riot. <laughs> oh, Christopher. <laughs> come back so random boys got 10 for the second half so you know it's not that bad is it to say how dominating the first half was he's not in that bad a spot random boy. and who knows he might he might somehow break armor this half <laughs> I don't believe he's broken armor yet He hasn't, he hasn't made a lot of blocks, has he? He was mostly just standing everyone up to get them knocked down. Perfect defence. Brutal with the, uh, the strength and the guard. Whole Rage Poo 2000. <laughs> And you could say this is a bit of a mistake by Christopher, or you could say it was a good play by Random Boy. But I, I like this blitz around, blitz here to get the uh, to get the guard off. Not a nice play there. <laughs> yeah, that could be all right. Could be, could be all right, that chip. <laughs> huh? I don't have a PO box. No. <laughs> I don't know how you get one. Random boy choosing to not re-roll the pickup, um, which you know it's fair because at the end of the day, if the, the ball comes in here or here, it's it's not bad for him, is it? It, it could have gone crazy like backwards in and it could have gone like 12 this way. It could have been horrific throwing for him, but unlikely to be a horrific throwing. So I like not re-rolling it. So now it's all the all the 2Ds back and the core mighty blitz. Greg's down the street, you know. So just a push. He pushes him in the guard, which is alright, isn't it? He's basing up the skinks a little bit. Probably bring him back as a safety. Activates the beast first. Runs forward with him. That's a bit. This is a bit. You know, sk Skaven. Lizardmen are fast. I guess he, he's not going to run away from them this turn, so getting him forward isn't bad. And also, he was basing this guy who then stood up, so that's. It's generating him a claw mighty hit, isn't it? Which is good. This time he re rolls the pickup. And <laughs> gets, a, gets a little screen. I like this blitz here, this is good, getting the uh, getting the crocs. Getting the crocs' tail onto these three. And even getting a block with a skink, fantastic. Well, that was pretty good, I think that was pretty good by a uh, random boy. Break tackle, he actually rolled a six on the break tackle, so he could have dodged again if he wanted. But he's content to just take the blocks. I may have tried to dodge again to get him back. The ball's under a lot of threat here, isn't it? Oh, Christopher goes for the safe play of getting his guy up. He could, of course, wait till the end of the turn and GFI didn't hear. Might have been better. Oh. 
another another one gone. The weight of blocks is definitely in Christopher's favour here, isn't it, for the removals? Ooh, I thought he was gonna hit the crocs there. Maybe maybe he should have hit the crocs. Could have reached. Oh, there's another cars. Brutal. <laughs> so yeah, you know he's got he's got quite a few players around the halfway, he hasn't got anyone back. And as you can see, Random Boy has a bit of an opportunity to scoop down the sideline here. He does make GFIs here, but I, d I don't really like the GFIs. Because, I mean, they worked out. But he's not in scoring range, so it's not so good to have made them. Again, blitzing with the uh, Crocs, getting him, getting him into action. Cheeky 1D, pal. And now it's looking really hard for Crucifer to stop this, isn't it? Um... One option he had was to blitz this Saurus, and the, the option that I liked, I remember now, was to uh, was to hit with a beast of Nurgle, <laughs> um, and pow. And then he could have uh, this guy could have gone one two three four, and this guy could have gone one two three four. Oh, maybe it's a GF. Oh, it's not, oh no, because if he powers him, he can do it. Then he could he could blitz. Uh, he could have powered him to here. He could have gone in there, and then he could have blitzed him, and then chained him onto the onto there. Um, so that, you know he kind he could have he could have changed the chained the sure hands on to make a block on a skink. Um, but yes, Crucifer instead went for the uh, getting the beast in. Attempted to get the beast in. I mean, my plan wouldn't work anyway because I didn't get the power on the Beast of Nurgle anyway, so... And now everything was kind of stopped. Like, that, that even blocked the path, right? Because we've gone 1, 2, 3, 4, double GFI. So that blocked the path, moving him first. And then, yeah, both down. If that had been a push, even, could have gone 1, 2... Three, four, GFI. I, know, I would have rather blitzed with it, like if it was possible to blitz with a beast, I would have liked to blitz, double GFI blitz with a beast. You know, then you then you then you get get it on the ball and it's just game over then, isn't it? If you double GFI. I think one GFI just to base these two wouldn't have been that good. I would have preferred the chain to that, but I mean it doesn't doesn't really matter. This this was good by Random Boy. I like this. This was very good. Because this totally stopped the uh, Beast of Nurgle getting there, right? Because he could blitz one. But then the other one would be in the way of the Beast's chip path to the ball. So this was, this was nice. Nice positioning by Random Boy, for sure. Really, all Christopher can do is try and get men back so that he's going to have to score. And then give him four turns to equalise. Well, not equalise, four turns to win it. I like the blitz with the uh, the Beast. The Beast of Nurgle is, is actually his best uh, anti-skin character with uh, being able to three dice with block and mighty blow, isn't it? As well as as well as getting attempts on things, he's just the best at hitting skinks on the team. Oh, this is a nice block. Oh, yeah, he did it. I was gonna say he didn't do it, but he did. Yeah, and then gets the three dice on the skink. Plim plum plu gets the power. Well, both down. Whatever. Bit greedy from Random Boy. 
I'm not sure I like that. I mean, I guess it was on the shoe hand, so it was worth it, wasn't it? He would have felt bad having to re-roll it, though, for sure. And he would have had to re-roll it with a double scope. So, I mean, that just shows the power of Lizardmen, doesn't it? Hardly any players. But Skinks are movement 8, and we're able to break away and get the tuddy. But he stayed out. So now there's only four Saurus and four Skinks. That's pretty, pretty horrible. <laughs> because it's not that simple, Johnny Five. And he has been, and he has been three dice in the money camp with block. And now as you can see, I hate this from Random Boy sacrificing the skinks because at the end of the day, the skinks are what can win him the game, aren't they? Um, he's already down that many players that he's like he's down that many Saurus that his Saurus aren't gonna aren't really gonna do anything right now. And he sacrificed the skinks, and then is lucky enough to get a perfect defense to put Saurus on the line instead. Because yes, he's stopping them getting hit with Claw Mighty, but he's only stopping one Saurus getting hit by Claw Mighty. Um, you know, he's still going to blitz somebody with Claw Mighty. So I really didn't like putting the skinks on the LS there. I thought with the three dice blocks, they were almost certainly going to go down. And get tented up as well. I, I hated that, to tell you the truth. But the problem is with the movement five, Crucifer's probably relying on a on a pass player to win here, isn't he? He does get the hit, the uh, Crocs, doesn't he? I, I wonder if it was worth trying to get round the back so that he could have uh, two D'd him into the into an additional into an additional hit from the Beast of Nurgle there, maybe. Maybe that was possible. Terrible block dice. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe it would have been better to have put this this noble warrior. In first, right? And then he could have uh, blitzed him back into the Beast of Nurgle. Maybe, maybe I don't know, maybe not. It doesn't really matter. It's hard in a minute, isn't it? You know, No one's going to play even close to optimally in a minute. Well, pretty close to optimally, I guess. I guess people play close to optimally in a minute. As close as optimal for them, anyway. <laughs> I, never, I, I only went over 30 seconds once in the first game, so... <laughs> A lot of it's automatic, isn't it? And, like, instinctive. Run the boy going for a cheeky ball base. And fails. <laughs> I don't think so, no, Johnny Five. <laughs> For the benefit of people on YouTube or who didn't watch me stream last night, he's referring to the new Underlords update, which makes it unplayable for me. <laughs> it's so good, isn't it, all this guy? I really do, I really did like because of his team. What he has to do though is get his get scoring threats up, doesn't he? Another this is this is like the third third double skulls. And he didn't have to re-roll it. But he kind of did. He probably should have done this block first so that this wasn't all crazy, you know. If, if this guy was down he maybe he could have eaten that double skulls. But obviously he's kinda of hoping he can win in normal time now, isn't he? And uh but it's 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 it's, it's going to be a struggle. I guess he's three GFIs away. He doesn't have to do a passing play. He's three GFIs away. So at the moment, he doesn't have to do a passing play. But I think it would have probably been worth trying to get 
the pester goes into a position to potentially receive a pass. <laughs> Preposterous. Well, the thing is, it's just it's just difficult, isn't it? Because he's got to uh, he's got to get the uh, he's got to conserve rerolls in case of the possibility of overtime, hasn't he? <laughs> Oh man, humorous chimps. Some of the things on Underlords are terrible. Oh, I hate this blitz. I hate this blitz from uh, Christopher. I would have totally gone for the three dice on the skink and then just run up the middle here. He's uh, making himself do a pass now, isn't he? Oh, I don't like that at all. Was, was this the break tackle guy? No. Break tackle guy's gone. No, I don't like this at all. No, I think he definitely should have blitzed this guy. Definitely should have blitzed this skink, and then then he would have had the uh, the three GFI score. Now, as it is, he's made himself do the pass, hasn't he? <laughs> yes, Johnny Five. Yeah. And then he ran out of time this turn, didn't he? Run out of time this turn, so this this obviously looks horrible putting the ball there. <laughs> but he did actually run out of time. Three plus is better than three two plus, but you could have the point is you had the safety net, didn't you, right? Is it is it better though? Is it better? You've got two re-rolls for those three two pluses, so I don't think it is better, first of all. And second of all, you've still got the safety net of a receiver if you fail one of the first two GFIs. So I think it's definitely better to... It's 100% better. I disagree completely with your analysis there. But I mean, got a claw mighty hit on a Saurus, which is alright, isn't it? I mean, the fact that there is overtime does change things a bit anyway. It's not just like one thing's better than the other, is there? Because there is trade-offs and everything. Like, literally the only time there's a... There's an optimal thing is, you know, the last turn when it's res, isn't it? That's the only time there's a clear best play. Yeah, it didn't help that you ran out of time. Obviously, that made it that made it look a really horrible move. <laughs> it wasn't as bad as how it happened. But there you go. Make the pickup. Makes the pass. Fails the first three plus. Has to use the reroll now. And fails. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what that's what we said at the time, yeah, Christopher. Yeah, exactly. You you only you only reroll the last part there because it was too unlikely to work. And so it was pretty pretty much the most unlucky way you can get is by failing the three plus because then you have to reroll. <laughs> if you failed the pick pick up and everything, it would have been alright. So who wins the toss? So random boy wins the toss. There is a chance. I think had Christopher won it, it'd be over. He's still got eleven players. I still don't even know if anyone's been stunned on <laughs> on Christopher's team. <laughs> so he's got the strong boys at the sides to so you know to stop the getting blitzed a little bit. But still, you know, could uh, random boy could use a guard. And blitz, or you could just use the reline the crocs. Still got three skinks. Like it's it's obviously rough for random boy at this point, but he's still got the. Uh, he's still got a chance. <laughs> You're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> I think probably what he should have done was just put one player on the LOS and really push down a side. I think that's probably what he should have done. Either Crocs Blitz or uh, Guardian and then Blitz with the other one. Especially if he's just doing this Blitz anyway. And he rolls a skull. He's only got one reroll left. But of course you've got to get to overtime to use. <laughs> 
<laughs> to do that. But... Oh, it, was, it wasn't a skull, it was a double skull. Alright, fair enough. Yeah, of course he's got the guard from the crocs. But, um... So he, he has to eat the double skull. I'm not sure because... <laughs> I like the, uh... I like the... I like the beast blitz here. Because... At the end of the day, you you know you really want to get it. It, you don't lose anything. If if he if he boneheads here, you don't lose anything, right? Because uh, he's not he's not got anyone in the tents at the moment anyway. So yeah, it's kind of putting all your basket all your all your uh, eggs in one basket by going for the blitz. But I like it. he's the best he's the best anti skin player anyway, isn't he on the team with block and mighty blow? So that's very nice. Gets in there, bases the ball. He's just a well. There's no real way to chain him, is he? He's just got to. Uh, he's just got to try and dodge away. I think. Tags him. Oh, he's, he's, I guess he uphill blocks the the beast. I guess you have to. I guess you have to uphill blitz the beast. <laughs> That's the reroll gone, and he gets him. So now this kink is free to scarper up the sideline. Do you know what? I think it might have been better to have dodged here. Yeah, it's it's uncomfortable, but he's not in scoring range now, is he? Yes, he is. Just a GFI away. <laughs> Ignore this. <laughs> Ignore what I'm saying here. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore that. Yes, he is in the score. Right, one, two, three, four. GFI for two dice with block. Gets him. And kills him. <laughs> Not bad. Still worried about this guy, though, isn't he? And yeah, it takes the ball down. Gets the stun. There you go. That's pr pretty much all over now, isn't it? That's pretty much all over. <laughs> oh, he gets in there. Oh, so he's gonna he's gonna clear this skin away. Yeah. He can get the ball, can't he? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He could just run all the way through. He's he's gonna go a little bit. No, he's not even trying it. Not even trying to run all the way through. <laughs> I would have probably done it just because, like, hey, you don't get anything though, do you? If you do it, you just get three dice into another three dice. So you don't achieve anything even if you do pick it up. Actually, just wants to blitz the skink and foul the other one, I guess. Maybe don't foul. But I don't hate fouling. It's like obviously Crucifer's hasn't got that much time to score. So Fouling might stop might stop you the chance of might deny you the chance of picking up this turn. But yeah, I mean it's it's really hard for random boys. There's <laughs> so few players left. And so few skinks. Gotta roll all the dice to just to even have a vague shot. Oh he's got this guy freed up though, that's pretty good. Breaks AV. Turn 20. Was that the first one? I don't know. <laughs> and he runs round that way. And doesn't pick it up. I, I think I would have been tempted to go for the pick up there. I think I would have gone... I mean, you, you know, I'm not saying that Random Boy is wrong or anything. But I just feel like I would have just been chucking the dice at it to try and do something here. I probably would have run there and tried to GFI. Fail and die. But, you know, I would, probably would have tried that. <laughs> He's 
Look at the block here. He can blitz with the three dice with the uh, Pestigo here, can't he? Dangerous if he fails the pickup, though. She does has to re-roll it. Unlucky scatter. <laughs> I could have just gone into the crowd over that way. Or even it could have gone here for a 4 plus to win, essentially, or here. Um, but any of these three, it could have just gone in that way and it's GG, isn't it? This way would have been horrible. So... Obviously, it was unlucky to one in nine, but uh, <laughs> that goes without saying. Oh man! And then <laughs> that's ridiculous. What a scatter! That was a pretty gr pretty great play from from like random boy's point of view. In that he's got what three, four, five, six, seven. He could have gone for it twice handed off on a four plus and you know this scatter here is is not bad for the nurgle really because they again they've you know they've got this show hands there to pick it up this way is a nightmare for the nurgle and this way is a nightmare for the lizard men and uh, yeah now chris we were just thinking before that that you know might not be enough time for either side to win but now of course chris show hands is there as well so it's just uh, absolutely perfect for him now Maybe didn't need to uh, surf him with that. Maybe could have surfed him with this block. Maybe could have uh, blocked here, blitzed him, run around, and then surfed him with a block. Could have been an option. But I think he wants this guy in there to make sure. No. No, I think maybe this this uh, this guy in here might have been good. <laughs> so there you go, the show hands has got the ball. And he finally makes this hit. He frees him up as well. And now this really looks done. <laughs> Potentially, the crocs on the ball. But he fails the first GFI. That would have been pretty decent, I think, if he'd done that. It w uh, he had the he had the Pestigo here though, so he probably could have uh, probably could have two D'd him off. Yeah, in fact, definitely could have two D'd him off. So it wasn't even that good. <laughs> it wouldn't have even been a problem, would it? The Pestigo was here, ready to blitz him off. So now, barring a chain, it's. Uh, it's all over. Maybe he's got a blitz there. I guess he hasn't got a reroll though, so no reason. Hello, right to Valter Mason. Uh, he was actually in range, wasn't he, of double GFing, I think. I think he was in range of double GFing to base the ball. So by blitzing him and blocking him, then they're completely the ball's completely safe. So this was definitely the best play. Crucifer. And now Random Boy does this crazy thing to get the chain. The crazy play to get the chain in. And he gets the chain. And he fails the foul appearance. <laughs> but you know, if he got the push there, he could have he could have based the ball. But uh, you know, at least he tried, he spotted the he spotted the one player that he had and tried it, so Crucifer wins. And wins the second blitz pit, gets himself eighty dollar dues. So um, yeah, congrats to Crucifer. I, I really like this team. You know, the the only thing wrong with it was eleven men, which he couldn't change. You know, so yeah. Well, I guess he could have done. He could have had. He could have had a leader. 
pest. He could have had a leader beast and had an extra reserve, I guess, but that's probably a bit crap, right? But <laughs> you know, that's the only thing. That's the only bad thing I think is is having eleven men. But obviously, it means you get more of your TV on the pitch. So it's not. It's just. It's just not going to be as consistent with the eleven men. And obviously, he didn't have any tackle. But then that turned out to be not a problem in this format, really. So yeah, I really, I really did like the team, and uh, obviously. You played well as well, so there you go. Congrats, Christopher, and uh, thanks very much to Gadenik for the Blitz Pit. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.